So, I believe the Brisbane Broncos have an amazing chance to do something special that most other teams don't get to do in sporting in general to take down a dynasty. If you look at sports across the world, there is something that they call a dynasty. It's, you know, a mixture of amazing talent coming together with amazing systems from a coach that is absolutely just outclassing many other coaches in the competition, and we call it a dynasty. They go back to back to back, usually in premierships, but even then, sometimes they can just go full seasons of just challenging every single year. Early on in the NRL, we thought of the Melbourne Storm being this. When you look at the EPL in England, you think of Manchester City right now. They go back to back to back. They are unstoppable. They won the treble last year. When you look at the NBA, you think of the early 90s Chicago Bulls that just take over competition. Stephen Jackson, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman later on in the 90s. And then you got like the LA Lakers of you know the NBA with Kobe and Shaq. You got the Miami Heat with LeBron James and that. You got... In in the NFL, you got right now currently the Kansas City Chiefs that are changing the game as we speak. You look at before that, you had the New England Patriots that went back to back to back. There's teams that just defy all odds. If you want to touch on Australian sports in general, look at the AFL. We had the Richmond Tigers go back to back a couple of years ago. We had the Geelong Cats for such a long period be such a dominant team in the competition. You look at the Brisbane Lions going a three-peat back in the day in the early 2000s with Michael Voss, Jake, Jason Akamanis, uh, just amazing for what these teams can do in a competition due to systems and due to their talent that they have in each of their teams. And the Brisbane Broncos have something that they can do this year that many other teams want to be able to do in all those other different competitions. You look at the EPL, Arsenal are that team that they want to push Manchester City currently. you got Manchester United buying a whole lot of players, Liverpool buying a whole lot of players. Everyone wants to get to that point. But Arsenal were the closest to do it last year and we still bottled the league. We got so close but still so far away that you know Manchester City that year ended up going the treble. So really, how much did we really push him in the EPL that year? Which is pretty sad for me. That's my favorite team in the EPL. But there's multiple teams like that. In the NFL, you got you know the Kansas City City Chiefs are the dynasty, but if you look at it, the Philadelphia Eagles, you got Cincinnati Bengals, you got the Buffalo Bills, you got teams like that are trying to rival. You got Lamar Jackson playing at the uh, the Baltimore Ravens that are trying to rival these teams that are just unstoppable in most parts of the game. I feel like the Brisbane Broncos have an amazing chance to do that this year. There's multiple other teams we can talk about. We can talk about my New Zealand Warriors, whether we can do it, whether we can be that storybook ending, especially with uh, Shawnee Johnson looking like getting a daily end this year. But I strongly think that we are still a long way away. When you look at both those teams at the top of competition, and especially when you look at the game over the weekend where the Brisbane Broncos took down the Parramatta Eels 54 to 10 in one of the most dominant performances over the weekend, rivaled by maybe the Melbourne Storm over the Raiders, maybe the Knights over the Doggies. But when you look at a team of the Parramatta Eels that were fighting for a top eight spot, they're such a hard team at times to win because when they turn up, they can turn up. But the Brisbane Broncos just handle them with ease out there and really just showed that their class across the park is starting to rival the teams of the early Broncos, the early Broncos that we all hated at moments and all loved at moments. If you're a Queensland fan that lived around the Brisbane region, you saw Darren Lockyer, saw that, you love these sort of players. I personally, I love Darren Lockyer. I, I think he's honestly, you know, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. When you look at those early season Brisbane Broncos, the reason why they were so dominant verily in the early 2000s, the late 90s, 2000s, they had some of the best talent across the park. They could not be stopped and they had the genius coach of Wayne Bennett at their helm. This year, obviously for me, the coach-wise is not the same sort of way. Kevy Walters, I believe, is doing an amazing job at the Brisbane Broncos, but he is not a Wayne Bennett in a way. But... What I can say to you guys is that team across the park just rivals so much of the old Brisbane Broncos teams and just shows that they still have that the talent. They still have that like ability to get the talent across the park. You think of the early Broncos, you think of uh, confidence. You think of a team that is just willing to do whatever it can to win the game that will just throw everything because they got the talent across the park to do whatever they want in a football game. This team is doing very similar things as early Brisbane Broncos teams that we're talking about early 2000s. Obviously, the Broncos have missed that for many years, but now is the time. When you look across the park, I would I would legit argue with you guys that position for position, they've got one of the best teams, if not the best team in the competition right now. The only argument you can ever give to me is the reason why the Penrith Panthers actually have trophies in their cabinet. If you're thinking like Leota versus Payne Haas or uh, Fisher Harris versus Payne Haas currently, I would give Payne Haas the talent like over any of those boys there right now. But Fisher-Harris has won a championship. You know, Moses Leota has won a championship. 
You look at Isaiah Yo versus Paddy Carrigan. I believe Paddy Carrigan has the talent to become the best 13 that we could have possibly seen in this competition. That's amazing raps. But if you think about it, this guy has improved from becoming a Wally Lewis medalist and still improving. He's scoring tries now. Now he's breaking through the line, giving off assists. He's giving off so much different attacking football when he was known before as that tough, hard-nosed 13 that can run the ball. He can be like a Cam Murray. But now he's got that slick ball playing like an Isaiah Yo. He's really rivaling some of the best like talent across the competition in his position. You look at Reese Walsh right now, currently, I would say that he's a top three, if not top two, maybe number one fullback in the competition right now. You could argue with me and say errors are the biggest thing that holds him back because he leads the comp right now on errors, unforced errors, forced errors. But if you really think about it, that's what makes Reese Walsh amazing. That's what makes Reese Walsh probably the, the most devastating player in this competition right now with the football and the most scariest player to come up against if you're a defender in the competition right now is because... Reese will end up doing whatever he needs to do to win the game. And the one thing the Brisbane Broncos are starting to find in themselves, and it's been through them early on in the year, they kind of lost it a little bit in the middle part of this year, but they're starting to find it back again, is if they defend all their errors, they defend all those massive opportunities that they do cause throughout any part of the pitch, if they can defend that with their hearts, they may you know, rival the Penrith Panthers this year. As I said before, you look at the talent across the park. As I said, Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobbo, Ezra Mam, Adam Reynolds, Katoni Staggs, Herbie Farmworth, Paddy Carrigan, Payne Haas. Even if you look at Jordan Ricky, you look at just across the park, they have some of the best talent in the competition right now. Even like Billy Walters is playing some of his best football that I've actually seen him play in this competition. They are growing as a football team. And I feel like that's a team that we need to worry about because... Number one, with finals, as they all say, you need to be a consistent team to get through to the finals. But the one thing I will argue with you is if they can scrape by, if they can get through the first, the second game into the finals, they get themselves to the grand final. All they need to do is to play their best game at that grand final. Sometimes a system, a balanced team, a consistent football team like the Penrith Panthers with unorthodox play, as we saw with Manly Seagulls over the weekend. We saw with the early Melbourne Storm teams, the teams like the New Zealand Warriors were teams to worry them because they had such confidence in their attack. They had such confidence that maybe, you know, not so much the early Warriors in those sort of years, but if we're thinking about like teams that just throw the ball around, but they can back their defense, I would think about the Melbourne Storm, a uh, late 2020 sort of Melbourne Storm team, the one that won the premiership over the Penrith Panthers in the first time. They changed their system to be, we will do whatever we can to win that game. We'll throw the ball around. We got Ryan Papenhausen. We got players across the park that have just talent personified. We forget Tino Fa'asumara'awi came from that Melbourne Storm team that had so much talent across that park. And they believed in throwing the ball around, get themselves to like score massive games. They had like 60 point games. We had Ryan Papenhausen scoring four tries a match. We had uh, Ado Kar scoring five tries a match in those years. And they backed their defense to back up what they were playing. And they ended up beating the Penrith Panthers pretty early on due to their, their style of football. And I believe that's definitely a key against the Penrith Panthers this year. It just really all comes down to, because we know that the Penrith Panthers, they probably won't drop a game coming into finals. They probably won't drop a game going the first game of finals, the second game. They'll probably end up being in the, in the grand final unless they come up against the Brisbane Broncos or a team that you know maybe can rival them in the semifinals or something like that. But they'll probably be there. Whether the Broncos, when they turn up on that grand final day, can play the style of football like they did the other night at the best and maybe complete it like 80%, but all their opportunities that they create they finish on. And that's the one biggest thing. When you look at the team during the whole competition, there's a whole lot of teams that, you know, make massive opportunities, but sometimes unforced errors, things happen that they can't get across the park. I think the Brisbane Broncos would lead that stat in the competition right now for tries that they missed. As one stat, I honestly do wish that the NRL had. It's kind of like in soccer, they have the thing called XG. It's the expected goals that they could have scored in that game. It really shows that uh, the amount of attacking opportunity some teams do have. Sometimes stats do lie, but if we had that in the NRL, currently right now i believe that we could find out a team that ends up finding their nose through the attacking at defensive line and creating opportunities so much more than other teams and i feel like the brisbane broncos this year are the team that currently tied with the Penrith panthers at the top of the competition you could argue Penrith panthers have the better defense but the broncos are not that far behind i think they're still a top three defense in the league right now so that's definitely food for thought. I really just think across the park, I think the Brisbane Broncos this year are bringing something different and they have the, the chance to rival and to take down a dynasty. This is things that multiple teams want to do in every different competition around the world. I've given you examples. I've given you Arsenal in the EPL. 
I've given you the Philadelphia Eagles last year who tried to rival the Chiefs. They weren't unable to do that. But early in those Miami Heat days when they created a dynasty, the Spurs had a dynasty of their own and they created that through trying to take down someone like LeBron James. Think of Golden State Warriors. They took down LeBron James at the Cleveland that he wanted to create a dynasty at Cleveland. Golden State stood in his way. Can the Brisbane Broncos be the team to rival this Penrith Panthers team for the future? Because if you look at that, the biggest thing is Payne Haas. If he does re-sign, that team is the most talented team in this competition. And I strongly do believe that. Please make sure you comment down below your thoughts overall on the Brisbane Broncos this year, whether they can win the competition. But also, if you enjoyed this sort of content, please make sure you like, subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate you guys. Take it easy. Peace out.